Hello and welcome to Grow3D. In this tutorial, we are going to make a quick and easy stylized wood material in Blender. That is also 100% procedural. And so simple, you can put this material together in a matter of minutes. If you want to use this material but you do not want to follow through this tutorial, you can get the blend file with the material for free on my Gumroad, link in the description below. If you found this tutorial to be useful, remember to drop a like and subscribe, it greatly helps the channel out. Alright, let's get started. First, add a cube. Scale the cube on the Z axis and again on the Y axis to get a shape that looks like a plank. Ctrl A and apply the scale. Because we are using procedural modifiers and textures, if your scale is not one, you may get some funky results. Add a bevel modifier. Give it around 3 segments. Set the shading to smooth. I think we could do with another segment. Assign a material and name it stylized wood. Alright, now we are ready to start creating the procedural shader. Go to your shading tab. Before we get started, make sure you have your Node Wrangler add-on turned on. You can find it under your Edit Preferences. We will we'll be using a lot of Node Wrangler shortcuts in this video. I like to set my world opacity to 0 so we get a much cleaner view. This is going to be a really simple procedural shader that uses only one generator. I like to call it the double musgrave because it is literally just two musgrave textures stacked together to create all the patterns we need. Add the first musgrave texture. Ctrl Shift and click on the texture to preview it. Make sure your viewport is set to material preview. Shift D to make a copy of the first musgrave texture. Connect the height of the second musgrave texture to the vector of the first musgrave texture. And you're gonna get a pattern like this. One musgrave texture, two musgrave texture. Now we have a basis for a pattern that we could turn into wood grains. Next, we need to add a mapping node. With the second musgrave texture selected, press Ctrl T to add the mapping node. Use the object texture coordinate so the material can be applied to other meshes and it will still look similar. To transform this texture to something that resembles wood grains, we will scale the texture on a single axis. You can choose to scale it either on the X or the Y axis depending on the direction you would like your wood grains to be. So in this case, I want the wood grains to be horizontal. So I'm going to scale down on the X axis. Now we have something that looks a lot more like wood grains. Now let's see how this looks like on our wood with a bump node. Add a color ramp. Drag the height from the first musgrave into the factor of the color ramp. Add a bump node. Drag the color from the color ramp into the height of the bump node. Ctrl Shift to go back to the principled BSDF shader to preview it. Give it a bit of a placeholder color so we can see the normals a lot more clear. This is not the final color, we'll work on it after this. Now attach the bump node to the normal. Voila! Now we see some normal patterns on our plank. Alright, right now our wood grains are popping up. We want it to be carved in like a groove. So in order to do so, just click on invert. There you go. The grooves feel a bit too strong right now, so let's just reduce the strength of the bump node to say around this. There we go. We have some nice looking wood grains now. The next thing we need to do is to give it a proper color. Add another color ramp. Once again, we're going to use the very same double musgrave to drive our color. Set the preview to the color ramp. The darker regions of a texture will be the base color of the wood, while the lighter part 
will be the color of the grains. Let's make it a brown that is a bit reddish. A little bit darker. And reduce the saturation. Hmm. We are making a stylized material, so you can actually make the color a bit more saturated than usual. Of course, if you are going for a more realistic look, use a lower saturation. In this example, we are going to be a little bit greedy with our saturation. For the color of the grains, first I'm going to just copy the color of the base wood itself, so we can use it as a starting point. From here, you can make the color lighter or darker. Because the grains of the wood are grooves, so we want the color to be darker than the base wood color. There we go, now we have something that looks like wood color. Now attach this back to the base color. If you want your grooves to be darker, just drag the color of the grooves to the left. And do the opposite if you want less color in your grooves. I'm just gonna drag it here a little. And now, it starts to look more like wood. However, it is a little bit too shiny. So the next thing to do is to add a roughness map to give it some variance. Once again, add another color ramp. Connect it to the double mask grave. If you attach the roughness right now as it is, it is going to be really shiny because in roughness maps, the darker regions correspond with lower roughness, hence shiny. Whereas the lighter regions of the map are going to be the rougher parts, hence less shiny. So for this material, we actually want the grooves of the wood to be shinier than the rest of the wood. So we're going to swap the black and the white stops of this color ramp. And you can control how shiny you want the grooves to be by controlling the darker tap. Alright, there you go. This is pretty much it. So in a gist, this procedural material is literally just a double mask grave. Made a color ramp to control the diffuse color. Another color ramp to control the roughness map. And another color ramp for the bump map or normal details. Alright. Let's preview the material with some proper lighting. The material preview lighting is not great to show how the material would really render. Add an area light. Position the light on top of the wood. And angle it a little, so we can see the differing roughness of the surface. Go to the render view. I'm using EV here. Increase the power of the light and the size of the light. Reduce the intensity of the background lighting so we get a more accurate lighting. And I'm just going to turn off the gizmos. There we go, looks much better. And now we have a simple stylized wood that is 100% procedural. Alright, now I'm going to show you how to create variants of this material. Shift D to duplicate the mesh. Create another duplicate. Let's say you're making multiple planks and you want each of the plank to have a different variant of the material. So here's how you control different parts of the material. First, create a copy of the material. For the first Musgrave node, if you scale it up, it's going to create more loops in your wood grains. If you scale it down, it's going to create less loops. The scale of a second Musgrave node controls how dense your grains are. But I wouldn't really recommend using this to control the density because it creates quite a random effect. A cleaner way to control the density of your grains is to scale the y-axis or x if your, your grains are stretched on the y-axis. Scale y down to make it more spread out and scale y up to make your grains more compressed. So for this 
example, we're going to make it a lot less compressed. You can also play with the location to give your wood grains more variety. To reduce the amount of grains there are on your wood, you can also modify the color ramp that connects to the bump node. If you move the black stop up, it's going to take out all the smaller lines. Create another copy of the material for the wood plank on the bottom. So for this one, we want the wood grains to be a lot more loopier and also a lot more dense. And maybe we can move things around a bit. We can also make the grains a bit more shallow. In fact, we can decrease the x-axis even more to stretch out the grains. And maybe give it a bit more space. Alright, there we go. Now we have a fine grain version of the material. Before I conclude this video, I would like to mention that there is one caveat with making our material this way. Because we are stretching the texture on a single axis, some of the faces will look weird if you use this texture in a model with multiple presenting faces, like a cube instead of a plank. As you can see, the side faces look a little bit funky. And that is because we are stretching the material on just one axis. I point out this caveat in case you want to use it on a model with multiple presenting faces. But then again, in general, most of the time when you make a wood material, you'll be applying it to something that is flattened. In the majority of use cases, this wouldn't really matter at all. So yeah, there we go. Here's a simple stylized wood material that you can put together in a matter of a few minutes. It is made up of just one generator, that is a pair of Musgrave textures, and it is highly customizable. Here's an example of this material applied in a model I was making recently. Once again, the completed tutorial file is available for free in my Gumroad, links in the description below. And if you found this tutorial to be useful, do drop a like and subscribe, it greatly helps out the channel. Thank you for watching.